What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Sneaker Circle. It's your boy Danny back with another review. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking me out. This is a retail win. So if you're new to the channel, just know I try to review all the recent sneakers I've been collecting for years. And this is a pair of Air Jordan 3s that I really had my eyes on since like the first initial leaks, mentions that she was making another collaboration. In front of us today, we do have the Nina Chanel Abneys in the Air Jordan 3. So her first Air Jordan 3 collaboration. These are dubbed or she has them dubbed as the Bicoastals. And I must admit, they are quite, quite the shoe. Quite the shoe. So lucky for me, this was a retail win. I did manage to get these directly through her site. Now her site, it was super bugged out. So in terms of release details, we did get her site released them first. And then a week later, we saw them at boutiques and we saw them on sneakers. So realistically, your best bet was to get them through her website or that's what a lot of people felt like their best bet was because you know, backdooring and the luck of just sneakers is sometimes super hard to just rely on. So in this review video, I'm gonna be covering a couple topics. First one, we're gonna go over Nina and her work and her previous collaborations with Jordan Brand. I absolutely love them. I don't own them, but I do really mess with them. Then we're just gonna go over the sneaker in general. That's what most people are here for. So feel free to skip forward to that video. I'll try to have it timestamped just in case you just wanna get straight to that. And then I do wanna finish off on the release details for these cause it was botched. And in my opinion, a lot of people ended up turning away from the shoe because of how all that played out. All right, so I'm gonna get these out the box and let's just get straight into it. All right, so out the box, we got both pairs on the table, on the desk, just laid out. And off the bat, these are very loud. They are incredibly loud. I really do think this is a pair of sneakers that look way better in person than through pictures and through video. So just seeing them in person might really change your mind on them. So getting straight into the first point, Nina Chanel Abney. We've been seeing a lot of her work since 2017. She's been putting out some incredible pieces in terms of like her style, how she approaches everything. And it was super apparent in her first collaboration and now in this collaboration, she did manage to do something on these that no one's ever done, which is change that jump man. I'll give you a closer look in a minute, but just mentioning that detail is kind of crazy. This shoe, beautiful but i do like the color green so that maybe that's why these are loud but they don't bother me i have seen her say in a couple of interviews that when she works on pieces she starts out with shapes and then she moves on to colors to see how she's going to build everything out versus just having like a simple sketch to kind of build her works out and a lot of it's spray paint heavy so most of her stuff just looks incredible and i've personally been a big fan since her first aj2 release to make that apparent i really did want to talk on the box a little bit the box itself is beautiful. And that's something about her AJ2 release that I always like, I wanna own those shoes just for the box. And I know that's a crazy statement to say. In this release, she does give us an all orange box. It does have a texture to it. It kind of feels like after you've done spray painting something and you actually have like, you touch it. If you've ever done that, it has that same kind of gritty feeling to it. And it is a coating throughout the entire box. X shapes right there. Knowing how she uses shapes in her design language, it's super pleasing to see. I love the Jumpman she did right here, the 23. The fact that she was able to do that, she was able to recreate the Jumpman in her own version. That's gonna solidify this release for me or this collaboration. And then we ha do have some of the artwork she created for this collaboration. So let me give you a slightly better look. Here we have the logo. Here we have the faces. She usually makes her faces like that. She likes to use shapes to build out. She doesn't necessarily have to make a perfect nose, but you know it's a nose. And you can kind of tell it's like a stencil of the variation of the hearts. I really do love the way she, I guess just puts everything together. I think I've seen it described as deceptively simple, which like you look at it, simple shapes, but then you really start to pay, pay attention to it and it's not necessarily an easy task to achieve. So in terms of the sneakers, in terms of the art she creates, I'm already on good notes, but a lot of people do not like these, mainly because maybe they're a little bit too loud or mainly just because they, they're really still angry or bitter about the way the raffle was conducted. All right, so spend my time on that, getting straight into the sneakers. So taking a look at the shoe, we do have an all canvas upper. I mean, it's fitting, she's an artist canvas. A lot of people did think they were gonna be suede throughout, but if you look at a lot of the early pictures, you can kind of tell it was different textures to begin with. So instead of elephant print, you do have this green suede that's a little bit brighter than the rest of the shoe. To me, it's more of like a grass, kind of. And then this is more of like a deep forest. 
Taking a look at the toe box, I was unable to secure my size. I'm gonna get into that in the release details, but I know canvas isn't preferred for a lot of people, mainly because of the way it creases, the way the material wears in. Um, this is already meant to be, to look kind of like a faded canvas. So sometimes I don't know if it's the way the canvas is supposed to look or if it's just like a factory flaw. Besides the hues of green, we do have a vast majority of fossil. So you got like fossil on the soles, on this little leather piece back here, I'll get into it in a second. And even on the interior, it's all fossil along with the first set of rope laces. And then the least featured color is actually this orange right here. We have a little Jumpman tab. So you have her custom version of the Jumpman on the tongue, but then you have the regular Jumpman on the back. Then you have the orange hit right here and then a little bit of neon green. So technically this is the least featured color on the shoe. Majority of it is those greens and fossils. Now getting back to the heel tab itself, something she did that was pretty interesting. I don't know if it was specifically her or maybe it was Jordan Brand's team, but they did make the actual tab a leather instead of that plastic. So by having it as a leather, it's gonna last a little bit longer and they have it actually stitched into here. Now this sneaker plays a little trick on my mind. For some reason, since there's no gap in between here, I'll show you in a second, I'll show you with these. So if you look at these, there's a little gap between this and this. So it feels like this is a little more like curved. And then when you look at Nina's specifically, it feels more since it's all just one piece or stitched in to feel like one piece, it feels straighter. Is that is that weird or is it just me? So it's funny because if any other pair of sneakers, like if you go somewhere and you see a pair of sneakers with that kind of shape to it, especially Air Jordan 3s, you'd instantly say, you know, these, these are, they're fakes. But the fact that these were designed that way, it's actually kind of tough. Taking a look at the other sneaker, just to give it some love. Besides the leather back here and the stitched in details, along with this little orange Jumpman, you do have the Nike Air and a swoosh designed by her as well. So you see the Nike, you see the Air. I love these little details. It's kind of like what Tom Sachs did for his GPS program, general purpose shoes. Uh, he wrote Nike with the swoosh in his own handwriting. This is also designed by her directly. So now these did retail at $225 and a lot of people are saying, that that felt a little criminal because you're not getting a lot of leather on the sneaker, you're getting canvas. But I must say they did bless us with some really good interior leather. So on the inside, this leather is nice, it's plush. It doesn't feel synthetic the way out here does. This might just be the fact that like, it's a little more rigid. This shoe in general is rigid, by the way. I'll get into that in sizing. But the fact that a lot less plastic was used on the shoe is actually a really nice touch. Um, besides it being a collaboration, I'll give it the pass for, you know, the slightly higher retail. So in terms of sizing, these are a women's size. So you do have to know your women's size. It's basically one and a half up above your men's size or you, your unisex size. So I'm a 10 and a half. So my size would be 12 women's. I've read from other people and I've seen other reviews. People say that they do fit true to size. Um, I will say that the tongue is leather lined. So it has this little, it has leather on the inside and it has almost no padding. Realistically, it's just the leather, a bit of foam, and the canvas on the upper. Here's a quick look at that Jumpman. I love that Jumpman. That Jumpman is sick. Last little details would be the actual badges, the leather badges right here, other hints of orange. So on one, you do get Air Jordan. On the other one, you do get Nina. Now she didn't, she could have put her whole name, but I really do like that it's just Nina. I do think this is a shoe that's not gonna wear in the best. Um, if you're someone who usually gives yourself a bit of space, these might crease a little more drastically than others, but there is the case that you might want to size up a little, give yourself some room if you like wearing some crease protectors, if you like double socking, or you just like thick socks in general. When I size, I usually go for the width, but so these being exactly the same width as other Air Jordan 3s, I'm gonna be sticking true to size, so I'm gonna be hunting for that 10 and a half. All right, so. Last but not least, the actual release details. So these released on two separate dates. June 13th, these originally released at both a pop-up in the MoMA store in New York. All the apparel also launched then, and the only way to really get it is a reserve through sneakers. The second method that same day is you had to enter a raffle on Get Cool Studios or something like that online. It was a domain designated for this release. All right, I don't know if she's ever used it for anything else. Maybe she used it for the Air Jordan 2s. I don't remember. That was a shoe I was trying to catch on sale. That's just me. But that domain was used for this and it was kind of murky how it was going to release. It ended up being a raffle release and it was one of the most annoying raffle releases 
to date. So it does go as this. These released June 13th on that raffle. You had a couple hours to actually put your information in. But the problem specifically was the raffle wasn't working. So you would go in, you would try to put your information and then it would say servers are busy. So a lot of people have a big gripe on just the frustration of not being able to enter. I think people weren't able to enter once it closed, even though she did go out and say she was extending the time frame of the initial raffle. The problem is since the website was known, a lot of people were able to just bought it. So a lot of bot entries. And when it comes to raffle, I feel like Cactus Plant Flea Market has really set a standard of how these are gonna go down. You see a lot of retail wins with Cactus Plant Flea Market. And this is coming from someone who got really lucky. Usually people have kind of like this fog. Uh, once you hit, it was like the easiest release ever. If you don't hit, then it was the scummiest release ever. But I don't see that. I really did struggle trying to get my sizes in. And the weird part is I entered for a 12 woman because it was all in women's sizes. And then I got a raffle, um, an invoice for a 10 and a half woman. So that was a little annoying. I don't know if they were hand picking winners. I don't know if it was all automated. I think she did say it was being hand picked, but it's like super hard to do that. I don't know how many pairs she had, but if that was the case, then why wasn't I sent a W a 12 woman? And the worst part is I didn't notice it until like the day after I just got the, the raffle in. I just paid it. I'm like, yo, I'm winning. And then boom. Oh no, that's not my size. So now I'm in this hunt for my size. So this is going to be on trade block. If you have a 12 woman you're trying to get rid of and you see anything in my closet you might want, hit me up. I'm gonna be open. Um, negotiate with me. Don't don't try to crack me over the head for a pair of these though. Getting back to the release details, um, I do think these were muddied by Action Bronson's release with his New Balances. So when it comes to the New Balances itself, he he screwed that release up. You had a, a different domain. He leaked it on his Instagram and he leaked the password to get in. Like what? Like 20, 30 minutes before the release time. Yo, it was a wash. And then the, the release afterwards was like a raffle and that was also a wash. And then when he recently just did his third colorway of the 1906Rs, he relied on EQL and I saw more raffle wins that way. So that's what I'm thinking. That's why I think a lot of the momentum and hype that was built upon this shoe kind of just fizzled out because people were just so aggravated at those raffle. Final thoughts are that these shoes look way better in person. Nina's probably undefeated when it comes to box art and just execution of boxes. And honestly, I'm excited to see if she's gonna come out with anything else. I would love to see her do a pair of ones, maybe a pair of fours, fives, or touch up on a Jordan that really doesn't have a lot of love behind it, like a pair of tens. That'd be fantastic. All right, I'm gonna end this video. It's gotten too long. I didn't even get to wear them because they're not my size. I'm gonna see you guys in the next one. Peace. And wish me luck on my size swap. Bye.